Korea. We are we are there. We're on the air. Hi, you guys. What's going on? Welcome to the show. Saturday, traveling with Bruce show here. Let me just kind of. Yeah, that's as good as the camera's gonna get. Uh, June 9th, uh, 2018. We got a nice collection connection here. Uh, such fun on uh, the last uh, <laughs> 12, 12 hours. Uh, uh, trying to figure out my internet uh, thing. Oh my god, nuts, crazy. Uh, and on top of everything else, I, uh, I, um, you know, not only did I have the issue with with the internet, uh, I also had this morning when I, well, actually last night when I was shutting off this computer. To uh, you know, give it its nighty night time. Uh, it decided it wanted to do a, you know, a complete refresh, uh, re-update, uh, Windows update, or whatever you want to call it. And so uh, I just left it alone on my uh, on my table last night to just say, go ahead, you know, just refresh all you want. And then this morning when I <laughs> got up, and I good thing I got up early because uh, I was up very early this morning uh, and uh, started the computer and uh, the computer. Um, had to complete the uh, the refresh and uh, took an hour. Took an hour to go through all this crap. And uh, finally, that was done. And then I, you know, clicked the button to go onto the internet to see how my channel's doing and what's going on. In the meantime, of course, I'm on my phone and I'm on the internet anyway, so I know what's going on. F the computer won't go on the internet. <laughs> it's Getting, taking too long to get uh, just to get a, a signal and uh, I had to troubleshoot and uh, I uh, checked my internet speed and it was there. I called the internet provider. I said, what is happening? Is this possibly you or me? And, uh, no, it was the computer now. Now it's a computer issue. Uh, and uh, I did a, uh, went back to the, uh, the good old YouTube channel on my phone and uh, saw some videos on how to reconfigure and, I got it worked out, uh, but it had to have taken me two hours today to get this computer to turn on, <laughs> refresh, and get on the internet. And I'm sitting here going, I'm on the air in like four hours. So uh, what happens if I, uh, <laughs> I can't be on the air? Well, I'll, probably, I'll just talk to you on my cell phone. I'll go there. Uh, I do have another older computer, but I'm afraid to even try it uh, to see what's going on. So, oh, the technical thing that one has to learn to do this unbelievable but anyway uh i've made it uh so far so good on the picture i believe um the internet's been working perfectly since last night after the show i literally just unplugged the box and the router waited but a minute plugged it back in it recycled and voila you got a wonderful system good news or reality monday uh just before showtime about an hour before showtime the tech is coming into the house I think I'll have a new router uh, installed uh, by the time the tech leaves the house on Monday. But I told the, the boys, uh, I'm on the air at 2 o'clock. Uh, that's uh, uh, my time. That's 5 o'clock Eastern. 4 o'clock Eastern, he shows up. <laughs> I say, can he do this in an hour? Will he be on time? Uh, God forbid I'm late. But um, my thinking on Monday is if, uh, if he's late arriving, uh, I will then just do a, a shout out to everybody. Uh, I'll do a, a repositioning of the show. I'll delay it by half an hour or a full hour and just go on at uh, six in, in the Eastern time zone instead of five. But I'll, uh, I'll wing it as I have to wing it because right now I'd prefer to just be on time. Anyway, that's uh, what's happening in this guy's life. Just on that issue, oh my goodness, uh, never a dull moment. Uh, but welcome everybody to the show. I see about 27 of you are here so far. It's great to see you guys. And we've got a nice clean picture, seven thumbs ups already, no trolls. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, a little miracles and um, uh, hopefully we'll keep the trolls at bay uh, we haven't had any now in about the last uh, oh gosh uh, well, what five days we haven't had any trolls for about five days so hopefully it'll stay like that and we'll continue on with uh, what we have to do um, the channel is uh, uh, just kind of plugging along I think we've added only a couple of subscribers since yesterday we're probably about 2152 53 now um, but, uh, but, uh, it is also summertime approaching and, uh, um, things are a little slower in the cruise game. However, I've got news today. I got all kinds of stuff to talk to you guys today about. Uh, I even managed to squeeze in a trivia question today, which I'll do a little later. Um, uh, what else is I going to talk about today? Uh, uh, oh, uh, a couple more Amazon sales have come through. Some of you out there are using that link of mine to, to shop on Amazon. 
Uh, I think I've made about $15 this week in royalties. It's, it's, it's not a lot. It's nickels and dimes, but it just it just comes in. It's a little source. So if any of you are, are going to shop on Amazon, uh, below on this actual link right here, um, if you're on a laptop, you probably see it on your laptop right now. There is a link at the bottom of my description even to promote this show. But after the show is over, um, there'll be uh, there'll be the link in the description of this video, and if there's been a link now posted in the last for the last ten videos I've made, and I've gone back in time to uh, post the the link in some of my more popular videos that uh, just play all the time, and so thank you for all you guys on Amazon. I appreciate that. That's just great. Affiliate program marketing and uh, and Bruce the uh, Amazon associate is up and running, so that's great. Uh, I will now begin to work on other uh, affiliate links through other entities. I'm kind of looking into those right now. Don't want to make it too complicated too fast. I have enough going on. Thank you to all you folks out there who are finding me on Facebook, on the Facebook group page, Traveling with Bruce on Facebook. Uh, over 100 members now, 104, 105 uh, members of the group are, are a part of the uh, registered in, and photos are coming up. Uh, we saw, I just saw some this morning pop up again. Uh, another trip was posted. Absolutely wonderful. I think Thomas Henry uh, posted this morning uh, a bunch of photos on a, on a, uh, on the Norwegian jewel. I think he was on and I had time to look at them. Just, they're just, I just noticed them. I keep getting these notices that uh, so-and-so posted. So-and-so did this. Somebody did that. Somebody's liking that. Someone's putting this. So the site is active. I, I love it. And, uh, if you're addicted to cruising, Head over to Traveling with Bruce on Facebook and uh, keep up with me and, and the gang there. Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? Uh, still not monetized. Um, still getting donations from PayPal. Thank you again. Uh, I think Debbie Emanuel uh, uh, sent me a, a contribution yesterday uh, uh, for I don't know the how many times, uh, times, times. Thank you so much, Debbie. Um, uh, just, just, it's fantastic. I know that some of you have sent me in the past super chats on. Uh, YouTube, uh, but you can only do it during show times, and um, I only get 70% of that funding. The rest goes to YouTube, uh, but on PayPal, whatever donations come in, I get 93, 94% uh, comes to me instantly, and it's just a uh, godsend. Thank you for that. It lets me pay bills, and I'm uh, very appreciative. All right, uh, other news um, collaborations. Uh, uh, things are happening in the collaboration department. Uh, let me kind of move in my screen here. You've seen my logo. This is uh, thank you for you guys, by the way, for ordering these. Somebody ordered some stuff again yesterday, uh, and uh, I got pictures on uh, the uh, Facebook page uh, as well from uh, New Zealand. Auntie Jane uh, sent us photos on the Facebook page of her merch. Thank you for doing that. It looks great. And then um, uh, what else? Um, uh, Oh, I think Thomas Henry also sent me something, uh, him getting his merchandise. So just wonderful. It's, it's, it's just going out there. Thank you for supporting me with these purchases too. Wonderful. And we've got new logos coming. We're, we're developing even more. There's, I think we have 15 logos now on the uh, Redbubble store for Traveling with Bruce. <laughs> and there's a, there will be, oh gosh, I, by, by, time, uh, by the time Christmas time hits, I, I could have 25, 30 logos on there. It's just no one's going to have one of each. There's just no way. <laughs> it's great. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a whole new collectible. How about that? Um, <laughs> uh, okay, what else am I going to talk about? Collaborations. Okay, Lalito Loca. All right, I'm on uh, Cruise Wars. I'm on their next Cruise Wars. Uh, Monday night, it'll be posted. Uh, my, uh, my videotaping is all done. They're editing it all together, and it should show uh, next Monday. So I'm excited about that. And um, I've got La Lido Loca on my channel here on Wednesday night coming up next Wednesday. So 5 o'clock Wednesday, 5 o'clock Eastern Wednesday, La Lido Loca will be on this channel live. And uh, you guys can ask him anything you want. And uh, we should have some fun talking. That'll be, that'll be great. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what else? Um, I've got a couple of other uh, uh, collaborations in the works right now uh, and hope to have more developments done there in the next few days. Um, and so I'll, there'll be a series of them coming up. Um, and then I wanted to talk today about uh, Don. Uh, I want to talk about Don's Family Vacations just quickly. Uh, Don's Family Vacations is a channel uh, here on YouTube that uh, he's a, a travel agent out of Ottawa, Ontario, and Canada. I mistakenly always said he was in Edmonton, but he's actually in Ottawa. And uh, he's been doing videos uh, for a little while now. Um, he's got over 11,000 subscribers. He's growing very nicely. And uh, uh, Don has been battling uh, uh, cancer 
um, for the last uh, year or so, he uh, a little over a year or so, he was uh, battling and uh, chemo and a certain a number of surgeries. Uh, he posted a video yesterday that I really, uh, that really got to me. Um, he's been uh, declared cancer free right now. He's uh, he's through uh, the, this battle. His blood test came through perfectly, and uh, his doctor gave him nothing but good news. Was the quote from his doctor? I have nothing but good news for you. And he posted a video uh, where he visited his doctor, and uh, it has nothing to do with cruising, but it has everything to do with cruising. I um, I was so moved that he did that shared that with everybody um way to go so i i sent him a, a congratulations uh, uh my thoughts are with him uh all positive thoughts and his um his peeps his followers just uh they love him and they're uh they're i'm sure they're really happy with this news so if you get a chance check out uh, don's uh, family vacations uh, uh channel and check out his uh, video he made yesterday going to the doctor um it, it was pretty cool uh this allows him to plan ahead uh, cruises and trips and whatever else. And um, uh, I've talked to, uh, Don and I have talked a little bit uh, email wise. Uh, we're trying to set up a time to have a, a quick chat on the phone and uh, we're trying to scheme something up on a collaboration. So uh, I'm just just tickled pink that uh, that he did that yesterday. And uh, that got me thinking uh, once, once I saw that video, it got me thinking of the big picture, <laughs> which is much bigger than all of us which is uh, you take every day you have, uh, don't take it for granted, uh, but take it and enjoy and make the most of your every day you've got because you never know when the, there's a turn in one's life and uh, the direction goes uh, you know, the wrong direction. And uh, um, I take every day I have here uh, on this channel uh, very seriously. I'm very appreciative that I can do what I do where i'm doing it and um having a great loyal group of uh, viewers out there following me i i love it and the channel keeps growing and i'm really excited about it and uh you know i just want to let you guys know that uh, uh i don't take anything for granted at all i'm just uh, a healthy happy healthy guy and i uh, just want to keep her going and uh i really look forward to the day where i meet a bunch of you folks on uh on meet and greet events and cruises and uh you name it. So uh, uh, I think better days are even better days are ahead. Uh, so that's fantastic. I'm going to say hi to people because I've rambled on long enough here about my little world. Uh, say hi to who's saying hi to me. If you've never joined me before, we love talking about cruise ships here, cruise ship holidays. We like talking about uh, going on trips and finding deals and uh, comparing notes about what what do you hear? What do I hear? What do I heard about this or that? The other thing, I try to keep up on news trends and what's happening in the cruise world. I've got some news items here that I will re release here shortly. First of all, I'll say hi to everybody. Heather Young uh, uh, popped in here. Uh, she was saying hi uh, an hour before airtime. Uh, hi, everybody. 86 in Kentucky. Kathy Butler said hello. Hey, y'all. Hot, muggy, 87 Orlando. Kathy, Heather's one of my uh, originals. Uh, Kathy Butler's one of my loyal originals. Pamela Jordan signed in. Also uh, one of my great fans. I uh, love Pamela, too. Hi, Bruce. Everyone mostly cloudy. 86 Fahrenheit here in Iba, South Carolina. Steaming Bean, the steamer from Saskatchewan is here. 21 degrees today in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. Steamer, how you doing, pal? Good to have you here. Tom Henry, uh, hi, Heather. Uh, Heather, uh, Kathy, Pamela Bean, and Tom, you've been sending me photos on Facebook. I love it. It's 88 and muggy in uh, Richmond, he says. Uh, fired up my grill for uh, the first time. <laughs> Have some burgers cooking right on. <laughs> Peter Heckema. Hi, Bruce. Beautiful 87 degree in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Uh, spending the day around the pool and the barbecue tonight. Normally, Peter signs in first, but today he got he got passed by others. Uh, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Join whenever. How you doing, Peter? It's nice to have you here. Peter's a loyal supporter of this channel, too, and I really appreciate him. Heather Young is saying hi. Kathy saying hi. Everyone's saying hi to everybody else. Uh, Tom Henry, happy Saturday, Bruce. Heather Young, uh, uh, Tom, sorry, I was sharing Bruce's YouTube channel. <laughs> he, he probably said hi to her, and she didn't respond. He, she was watching me, waiting for the show to start. Tom Henry, boy, is the word uh, the the wood deck hot on the feet? Who can we sue? Laugh out loud. That's right. If your deck is hot, who do you sue? Because the old guy on the cruise ship uh, burned his feet on the deck of a cruise ship. He wanted to sue them. Oh, my goodness. Watch your feet out there, people. And they're like that. Tracy Dunlap is here. Hi, Tracy. How are you? One of my, also one of my great fans. I think Tracy the other day sent me a contribution on PayPal. And thank you again, Tracy, for 
all your support. Hi, Bruce and all from Naples. Hot, hot, hot. 90 degrees feels like 100. The heat index factoring in humidity. Said wind would be seven miles an hour, but I don't even feel a breeze. Ugh. So you got dead air, humidity, and heat. Oh, that's a bad combination if you're out in it. Seakeeper. Hi, Bruce. Uh, and everyone, another great fan of mine here, a great subscriber. Seakeeper. How you doing, pal? 82 Fahrenheit, cloudy, raining, expecting a storm any moment in Tequista, South Florida. A great day to do indoors chores and have a lunch break while watching your channel fan stuff. So, yes, sir. Stay indoors, put the air conditioning on, or at least get the fan going and relax. Absolutely. John B. is here. Hey, John, how are you? Happy Saturday in the 70s uh, here in Potsdam, New York. Great to have you back, John. Kathy, the picture looks nice today. It does. It looks really good. I think we're going to – I'm hoping we get through it. Um, new modem on the way, I think, though. Um, let's see. Picture looks nice today. Kathy saying, uh, Paul Wilgus. Hi, Bruce and all. 84 here in Virginia. Two weeks from today, I will be in Miami for my cruise. Oh, man, you can't wait. I bet you can't wait, Paul. That's awesome, pal. Uh, nice to have you back here, too. MG Toe is here. 60 degrees here in the deep south. MG Toe joined this channel in the last week or so. Welcome, MG. Uh, Randy Lucas. Oh, Randy, how are you? Uh, hi, all cloudy and windy a day up here on the ridge in Paradise, California. It's only up to 68, but uh, still, uh, if it's sunny, uh, hopefully it'll be all right. Well, cloudy, though. Mm, yeah, maybe not so great. Eh, sorry, Randy. Uh, great. Another great supporter of this channel. Thanks, Randy, for all your help for this, for my cause. I really appreciate it. And Michelle, too. Tracy Dunlap, looking good now. Bruce Seakeeper, computer ownership is an illusion. Mine belongs to Bill Gates and his minions. I paid for it. But uh, uh, BG allows me to use it sometimes when he doesn't need to update it. A pox on them all. <laughs> yeah, we might have the, we might own the container that this is, that this thing is in. But boy, uh, what makes this thing work? All the software and everything else, that's just out there. And it comes to us at someone's convenience. Unbelievable. MG2, um, no difference than a TV where you have to pay them to watch. Yeah, that's right. You just own the box. The Everything else isn't yours. Scott Weber's here. Hey, Scott. Hi, Bruce. It's a sunny 70 degrees here in Palos Verdes. Welcome back, Scott. Good to see you. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Tom. The steaming bean after Bruce's show. Gone fishing on the Churchill River. Right on. He's going fishing, baby. D&G Explorers. Morning, Bruce. Supposed to be 85 here in Madeira, California. A few days of cooler weather before it goes up to 100 degrees in two days. Welcome back, uh, guys. Nice to have you here. DG Explorers has a channel on YouTube, too. Uh, Charles Jordan. Good afternoon, all. Welcome, Charles. Nice to have you back, too. Heather Young, hi, uh, D&G. Jim Thomas, hey, uh, all. 74 for a high here in Anderson, California. Welcome back, Jim. Hope your knee's coming around. It sounds good. Everything we're hearing about it. Cam, hola, everyone. How you doing, Cam? I'm just stopping by to say, hey, I'm about to go cruise shopping right on. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, what picture? Never got uh, never got or sound uh, redo. Uh, do a redo. DNG Explorers. Hi, Heather. Thanks for checking my channel out and subscribing. There you go. Fantastic. Uh, T Hyper. Uh, hi, all. 19 Celsius over here in Bournemouth, UK. Uh, welcome to the channel today. So cloudy here, though. He's saying, welcome to the show. Uh, great to have you here. Fantastic. Heather Young. You're welcome. Great channel. Y'all go back. You all go check them out right now. DG Explorers on YouTube. Um, Marisa uh, is here. Hello, Bruce. It's 82 in New Jersey. And, and in one week from today, I'm going on the MSC Seaside. I'm going to try to get on the show next Saturday when I'm on the ship. That would be fantastic if we could do that. That'd be great. And if you're able to join us on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday show, fantastic. That's cool. That would be really cool. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that you're going to have a Really good weather, a good cruise. Uh, that should be great. d and Explorers, Cam, what are you buying for your cruise? Um, Tom Henry, ah, working now. Bruce tells us about your, your call uh, to your ISP. Uh, Bruce tells us what you call your ISP. I'm curious, is my Patreon showing my name $10 per month? Uh, uh, have you done, Is are, are you already an existing Patreon or are you a new Patreoner for me? Um, because I have a couple there. Um, let me just see here. Cool jazz. Good afternoon, Br cousin Brucey. Do you remember that radio guy? Uh, stream looking awesome today. You must have put the fear into your cable provider. <laughs> no, I, I bet I beg. <laughs> I don't threaten. I beg. <laughs> I try the old please take pity on me card, you know. 
Uh, Cam, some clothes at the moment. Uh, D&G, we're going to be getting snacks next week, the day before, right on. So getting clothing and getting decked out. DG sounds great. What cruise are you going on? Kathy Butler saw Jim Zim's uh, Bliss review today. So excited for those in our group that are sailing on it. Uh, that's great. I know Jim liked the ship very much. Uh, Tom Henry, Kathy, did you see his water slide video? Uh, would you like to try that? Uh, Kathy Butler, I'm so ha I, I was so happy when Don said he has... That he is cancer free in remission. I was yelling at the TV. Uh, Don's uh, family travels. Uh, yeah, that's really nice news. Uh, uh, T Hyper, uh, very happy for Don. Really like his channel. Uh, Kathy Butler, uh, no way, uh, Tom, uh, but uh, no way I'm going on that slide. Uh, but I would sit and sip a drink and listen to the screams, laugh out loud. Yeah, I'm not going on that tube. And <laughs> that water's like. <laughs> Tracy, uh, so happy for Don. Uh, live every day to the fullest. Uh, Tom Henry, I was. I am waiting to see. Uh, the uh, uh, Sea Wheels review of the Bliss, um, uh, Cruising on Wheels review of the Bliss. Got to suck up uh, all the Bliss info for our uh, uh, 3.30 um, uh, cruise on her. Um, that would be, Mar I guess, March 30, I'm assuming. Uh, cool Jazz, Tom Henry, I saw another video where someone got stuck on that slide. They wore the wrong bathing suit and didn't have enough force to go up through the slide. They had to open the emergency door to let them through. That was on the Jim Zim video. they showing that. Uh, Steamy Bean, yes, Don's vlog was very moving, uh, fellow uh, fellow hometowner. There you go. Maurice, uh, Bruce, did you hear about Anthony Bourdain? I sure did. Uh, I, uh, I was uh, really saddened to hear that. Uh, I was not a uh, diehard viewer of his. Like, I, you know, I, I've watched the occasional um, uh, episode of his, uh, and I was really looking forward to the show tomorrow. Uh, that was supposed to be about Berlin. Uh, I've been to Berlin a few times. My daughter lived there. And I was really curious to see, I, I, I don't know, you know, I know that episode will air someday, uh, will it be on tomorrow night? I, I don't know what happens now with these episodes, so I'll have to wait for it to see. But I, I was uh, saddened to see that. Uh, uh, I, I feel for so many people on, on a situation like this, when, whenever anyone, you know, when this happens to anyone, uh, like Robin Williams, uh, uh, the gal this past week, uh, uh, the fashion designer, and and so many other when we, people hear about, it, but it happens to people we don't ever hear about in much higher numbers, and it's uh, it's a real sad story. I, uh, you know, it makes you reflect because uh, he was sixty one. Uh, I'm sixty two, and uh, you know, my wife Jen, she's sixty two, like I am, and we, you know, we're we're just kind of wow, you know, um, our, how lucky are we? Uh, fortunate are we? Um, and you kind of look around you, uh, you know, you, you can't help but look around you to friends, family, associates, and you ask yourself, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Is everybody all right? Uh, uh, you, you just never know. Um, it's, a sad, it's a sad story, and it makes you reflect uh, greatly. And it, it makes me realize, again, how fortunate I am. And so when I heard that news, and then I saw Don's video uh, with his news, uh, you know, I, I'm just so grateful for the situation that I'm in and uh, what I do. Uh, with my group and, and how I'm able to engage with people and count my blessings. I really do. Uh, D&G, we watched Don's channel too. Good info there. Uh, Camille C Castorini is saying, hi, hi, Camille. Hi, welcome back to my channel today. Tom Henry. Yep. Uh, uh, CJ, wonder how a little too much uh, blubber works in the slide. I may need Bean to push me out on the uh, water slide. <laughs> On the bliss, <laughs> uh, Camille. Hi, Bruce. Hi, folks. I uh, I am uh, home drinking a Bahama Mama like on the cruise. Right on, <laughs> fantastic. Tom Henry, the burgers, uh, the burgers came out delicious. Apparently, fantastic. Tom, this is great. Uh, John Landry's here. Hi, Bruce. Just got off the seaside this morning. Oh, John, talk to me. Uh, how was it? Uh, tell us, tell us what you can about your cruise. Uh, this would be great news, uh, to Kathy Butler. Hey, uh, DNG Explorers, uh, have to check out your channel. Um, definitely, a uh, steaming bean, three to thirty-six days. He's got to get through cruise. DNG Explorers, thanks, Kathy. We appreciate it. Philios, our high Bruce and all sunny and twenty degrees in the UK. Got your face uh, streaming directly on my sixty-five TV. Oh my God, sixty-five inches of this. Oh, I, I pity you. Don't don't look at the deep. Don't I, I can't I can't be too close. You'll see too many warts. We don't want to do that. Uh, Tom Henry, John, tell us how it was. Uh, T, uh, T uh, hyper. Oh, nice to see someone else from the UK. Uh, Maurice, uh, how was the seaside, John? Maurice, tell us everything. T hyper, sixty five inches. That must be crazy. Seakeeper, ISP, internet service provider. Yeah, that's right. Seeming bean cruising with wheels was on the bliss too. That's right. Where they've been posting. 
Tom Henry, uh, I have I was a new patron in May. Uh, if you're a new patron, I've got you. Uh, then then you're then you are one of my patrons. Um, I have uh, I've only got about three or four in there. I don't have that many. Um, I hadn't been uh, aggressively uh, marketing Patreon because it requires a lot of work to develop that site. But I've left it open, and I've had a few uh, folks who've been uh, 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 making a pledge there every month, and uh, and I really appreciate that to no end. Uh, I thank everyone. Uh, I think Kathy Butler is also a Patreon and a patron. And uh, so are you. So I really appreciate that very much. Stephen Bean, those tubes have a weight limit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those water tubes. Scott Weber uh, saw Jim Bliss's review this morning. I'm so glad it's uh, porting in Los Angeles. I, I live really, really close to the port, and the money I save on the flight could, uh, you, you know, could use to score a sweet. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Philly OC, yeah, John, uh, uh, be interesting to know what you would, uh, what you thought of it. I rebooked for two weeks next May. The Steaming Bean, Tom. Tom Henry, happy to assist. Affilios, uh, Typher, no view of the sea for me in Birmingham, though, uh, the inland. John Landry, the cruise was incredible. The only problem was children everywhere. They shouldn't be. They had kids in the casino. Oh, man, that's not, you don't want that. That's crowd control. That really shouldn't be allowed. Um, a great, uh, how was the food, John? How was the entertainment for you? Were you on the cruise with one of those drink packages included in your fare? Did you take advantage of that deal? Uh, did the kids double down? Steamers asking. <laughs> um, you know, how was, uh, how, like, did you go to the buffet? People complained about that in the past. Uh, let, let us know. How were your ports of call? All of that sort of stuff. Maurice, did you encounter a smell? Everybody is, uh, yeah, Maurice wants to know. Uh, did you go exploring to see if you could find one? Uh, you know, it's not, not the greatest thing to be doing on a cruise, but if you're curious about what's been going on. T. Heifer, I know the feeling Filios was born and brought up in Oxfordshire. Uh, right on. Uh, so some of the UK are on the coast. A lot of folks aren't, and uh, you know, you, see, you either see shipping or you or you don't. Uh, I love the countryside and the and the sea, though. He's saying fantastic. I had a wonderful trip in the UK with my wife and daughter. Uh, this was in 1999. We uh, we were moving off the island in the Caymans. We'd been in the Caymans since 97, 98, and and the end of uh, 99. We um, we were. Uh, uh, on a trip, and then we uh, we left the island in 2000. But in 99, I spent uh, with my wife and daughter a full month in the UK. And uh, we started off in London at a, a bed and breakfast, or like a hotel that included uh, breakfast, actually, um, in, uh, in uh, what would that be? Russell Square. We were in Russell Square in London. And uh, we were there for about a week or so, seven, eight, seven, eight days. And from there, we migrated to Bath. And uh, we were in Bath, England for, we thought we'd be there for maybe a week, but we ended up staying for nine days. We rather enjoyed it. We used Bath as our, as our kind of launching pad for day trips and um, um, really enjoyed. I'd always wanted to see Bath myself, the Roman, uh, the Roman baths and everything. I'm, uh, I'm a nut for that. And um uh, we we had a rental car, and so we uh, and we were used to driving on that side of the road because we were in the Cayman Islands with our own car living on that side, driving on that side of the road. Um, and so we went to uh, Bristol for a day, and then we went to uh, uh, we went to um, oh my gosh, uh, um, you know the the ancient rocks, uh, uh, Stonehenge for the day. My goodness, my my memories are going today. Um, and so we were Gloucester and other areas and uh, wiki 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 holes or wiki hole the caves we went there uh, we really uh, enjoyed it and this had a, a number of lazy days in bath itself and then we did a drive down to uh, uh, to Portsmouth and then we ended up in Dover and we stayed in Dover for a few days uh, uh, before our flight home and then we worked our way back into London on the day of our flight out and uh, dropped off the car at Heathrow and uh, flew out back to Canada. Fantastic uh, time, uh, but it was short days, of course, because uh, we're talking about winter. Uh, we're here in December. We got back to Canada on something like December the 20th. And, um, uh, you know, we were absolutely in the shortest days of the year in the UK. Uh, sunset before four in the afternoon. So, you know, you did your seeing, whatever you saw, you saw from about eight in the morning, nine in the morning until about three in the afternoon, and then it would be nighttime. <laughs> and uh, just the way it is. Um, 
But nonetheless, we, we encountered some very reasonable weather uh, even at that time of year. Uh, the grass was still green in and around the bath area. It was beautiful. Um, and it was great. We, and in Portsmouth, we, uh, we saw some of the uh, shipping there and uh, uh, some of the uh, museums. And uh, we saw a lot. My daughter uh, to this day says, Dad, we saw too many ships. Just too many ships on this trip, Dad. Uh, you, and your mom, you, you and Mom, all you two want to do is see all these ancient uh, ships from way back when. And uh, you've seen, Dad, you've seen one, you've seen them all. But I did convince her to go on a cruise with me. In 2008, when she was uh, 20, and uh, she rather enjoyed that cruise. Uh, they, although it was a ship, it was an okay ship, the Norwegian Jade, and we had a good time of it. But uh, on that UK trip, uh, she kind of had it with us with museums and ships. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Kathy Butler, Jim Zim said, everything on the seaside got, uh, everything in the seaside got wrong. The bliss got right. How about that? Uh, John Landry, uh, I was in the uh, yacht club, uh, but I went to the buffet a couple times. Food was good. Okay, so fantastic, John. You you were guaranteed a good cruise. So you were in the yacht club because uh, I've heard nothing but good things here. Philios, yep, dead center, boat as far away from the sea in any direction in the UK where he is. Uh, John Landry, a uh, good variety of food. No smells. We walked every part of the ship. Fantastic. Philios, John, I agree. I felt the food was very nice. Uh, Nina, hi, Bruce and all. Greetings from a sunny, warm Sweden. 20 degrees Celsius now, 8.30 p.m. Hi, Nina. Welcome to the afternoon uh, Saturday show. John Landry, the thermal spa was excellent. Very good. That's what I want to know. Uh, how's the spa on that ship? Fantastic. Tommy Eaton, uh, hi, Bruce and all, out of hospital. Had to take a stress test. Flunked. <laughs> Flunked. Doctor said, see my um, HR manager for a less stressful job. See my human resources manager for a less stressful job. Had to tell her I was the human resources manager. <laughs> Uh, you can tell, folks, I don't pre-read these messages. I'm reading them like <laughs> I am the human resources manager. And I'm all stressed out because of all my employees who are all stressed out. I'm trying to help them out. That's stressing me out, man. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> well, I think you deserve stress pay, my friend. You deserve a raise for all the stress you're taking for that damn company. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, Tommy! It's all good though. He's saying it's all good. Oh man, Tommy, you need a cruise. You need a cruise right now, and your employer should be paying you for it. Oh my gosh! Uh, oh god, John, John Landry saying nobody pressing to buy anything on the on the uh, seaside. That's good to hear. Kathy Butler, I have consistently heard. That the Yacht Club is the best bet with Seaside. Those in the Yacht Club have had the most complaints. It's uh, outside of the Yacht Club had the most complaints. Glad you have fun on, on there, John Landry. Stephen Bean, love the shambles in York. Uh, Philios, John, they have they improved the tender situation. It took us a while to get off at Grand Cayman. Frank Jennings, how are you? Uh, great, Frank, how's it going? John Landry, the tender situation uh, isn't MSC's fault. Cayman runs the tenders. And it's it, there's five, six ships at a time in the Cayman Islands. So it, it's nuts. The Caymans have bought into cruising. They're thinking, hey, let's uh, let's bring 15,000 people a day on the island, uh, you know, even 17,000 at some time uh, with six, seven ships and, and just take all the money. Just take all the money. Yeah, well, you're you're destroying the island that made it, that was such a quaint place to visit by having so many people visit it. And that's why in my video I did this week, if you guys get a chance, you haven't seen this video. I did a video four or five days ago visiting the islands. The last time I was on my island that I used to live on, my wife and I rented a car. We avoided the ship tours because we knew uh, the ship tours would be just hell on earth. There were five ships in port the day we were there, and we were on a 4,000-passenger cruise ship. It was going to be mayhem. And uh, we rented a car, and we drove to Rum Point, and there were... 30 people there. It was wonderful. Oh, it was an easy traffic and a beautiful day and got to see the, the islands and the, the beaches along the way and how the north side of the island is different than the east side, which is different than the south side, which is different than Seven Mile Beach. And it was just, it was great. Uh, we really got our money's worth. You got to check it out. Uh, check out the video. Um, Philios, uh, Kathy Muller, I went... Uh, a Bella class, which is the most basic, and I have zero complaints. I'm glad to hear that too. 
Uh, Phyllis, that's thank God for that. Uh, that's good news. Tom Henry, uh, Bruce uh, got kicked off the big TV screen today. Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 2 took over for Cindy's viewing. You're out, Bruce. So you, get, you don't look as cute as, uh, as Mr. Cruise. Get the hell off the screen. <laughs> Uh, Kathy Butler, that's great for those. I'm so happy to hear that. It seems maybe they addressed the issues that were on the first few ceilings. I've never, I never like to hear people who weren't happy. Rich Jones, oh Richie, Richie boy, oh we got a mama's boy here, yay! We finally got us a, a troll. Richie James is here. A little troll is here. Oh my goodness! And Frank Jennings, oh Frankie boy, you two are the little little. Uh, Little pedo lovers, there you go. Oh, you're gone. You're gone. We got a couple of morons here today. We've had about four days of relatively quiet, but uh, yeah, a couple of them have shown up. Uh, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do, Tracy? Storm is rolling in, thunder and lightning, blue skies, cloudy now. That's how it goes in Florida. Probably will lose the connection. Hang on there. Uh, go away, troll. Kathy Butler is saying uh, we've deleted a couple of those messages. Um, let's see. Uh, John Landry saying, everybody was friendly outside the Yacht Club and still had excellent service. We actually spent more time outside of the Yacht Club than, than inside. Fantastic. John, that, I'm glad you had a great cruise on this ship. I really am. Uh, uh, Jake Nix is here. Hi, Bruce. Uh, how you doing, Jake? Kathy Butler, Sea Keeper. Got your troll hammer ready? <laughs> MG Toe. The seaside sounds like a typical European scam, he's saying. Scam? Why would you say that, MG? The first ship in the USA, so they had to, so they had, had so they upsell the higher priced cabins and the less expensive cabins toward the bottom of the boat. They, they make smelly. Well, AMG, come on. I don't think they're doing it on purpose. It's a brand new ship, new design. This way, the guests have to get out of their cabins and go shopping center on board. Oh, come on now, AMG. That's not true. It's a logistical issue, I feel, uh, but I will agree with you on the European aspect. They set up their ship. A little too on the European side and a little too much opera in the entertainment room, perhaps. But uh, uh, lately, very good reviews for the seaside. Very, very reasonable and uh, and much better than what we heard uh, back in January, February. Oh, man, what a difference. Philios, uh, Kathy Butler, you should listen to more reviews and don't rely on Jim Zim. He is obviously disgruntled by something and pretty, uh, and, and pretty in parts. I watched his video earlier and he spent half of it talking about MSC. Well... Uh, uh, Philios, I've got to defend Jim Zim a little bit because Jim has been on 43 plus cruises. He's been on a number of different ships um, and uh, he nailed it on the head at the time. When he took his cruise back in February, Fe January, February, he was echoing exactly what was going on at that time on the ship. Uh, it was, there was just, there's all kinds of issues that they had not ironed out and the lineups at the complaint desk, you know, the, uh, the hotel desk, were a mile long all day long people complaining um there were and there were just it was like a lot of little things and it was getting to him uh and he reported it it's just the way it is uh, kathy butler she's reporting the trolls thank you kathy uh trolls are back tracy says um let's see here uh, uh, tommy eaton thanks all doing okay now um tommy oh, i'm glad to hear that maurice said uh, john did you have to activate your cruise card on the ship how did that work Tracy reporting them to Kathy Butler. <coughs> Phileos, I hear that. Uh, I, I, Phyllis, I hear you, but it was pretty widespread that first couple of months, not just Jim Zim, that just as I was saying. Heather Young, I did too, Tracy. Um, everyone's reporting these guys. Phileos, uh, Maurice, they, they have small machines like ATMs, very simple to use and quick. Very good. John Landry, uh, there's no opera show. They took away the opera. Oh, good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Peter Heckema uh, just posted um, Alaska cruise pic on the Facebook site. Also pictures of the train that Carnival has just purchased. Thanks, Peter. Fantastic. I know you were mentioned the other day you had ridden the uh, train. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you did that. <clears throat> I'm glad you did that. After the show, you guys can head over to the Facebook uh, page, Traveling with Bruce Facebook page, and check out the photos. Uh, like I said, any of you folks who want to post photos up there of past ships you've been on, past trips you've been on head on over to my facebook uh, uh, page traveling with bruce and uh, hang out with us there it's perfect for cruise addicts uh and uh, whether you're new or or experienced doesn't matter uh fantastic to have you do that i think i had a person the other day ask a question on the site uh, about cruising i was happy to answer it there uh whenever i get the chance um uh, maurice uh, oh, okay thanks guys kathy butler well that explains the 12 thumbs downs folks let's get the thumbs ups going because the trolls attacked us on the thumbs downs Maurice, do they have the Love and Marriage game show? I don't know. Uh, Tommy Eaton, question. Carnival allowed us to keep sign and sail card. Do we use this for our next cruise, or do they give us a new one? They'll give you a new one. These are souvenirs. Here's mine. 
from uh, Princess, and here's one from uh, Norwegian. You, you take it with you. It's a souvenir uh, of your trip. Uh, T. Heifer, probably a new one as with the with Cunard. Randy Lucas reported the trolls too. Thank you, Randy. Uh, let's get the thumbs ups going and knock them out of there. Uh, we can't get rid of their thumbs downs, but maybe we can outnumber them. How are we doing on thumbs ups now? 27 to 12, right on, right on. The, the, uh, earlier this week, I got 32 thumbs downs in 10 minutes. 32 of them in 10 minutes. The trolls attacked and we went after them as well, uh, but we outnumber them now. I think we're almost 60 to 32 or something like that on the video we did a few days ago. So thank you guys for uh, th for the uh, for the uh, thumbs ups. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Tom Henry, I have no thumbs downs here. Why does it vary so much by viewers? Tom, it's possible you're watching me on a delayed loop. And if you refresh your computer, you'll you'll catch up to within 30 seconds of my show. But th that's just me guessing. I don't know how this works out there for you out out in the uh, out in the uh, far farther reaches from my house here. Uh, cool jazz. That card is to keep. You get a new card with each cruise. Uh, Kathy Butler. I had to refresh it, so it updated the thumbs up downs. Tracy Dunlap. Laugh out loud. Uh, uh, Tom. That is what happens to me. So I don't even try to use the TV anymore than when watching traveling traveling with Bruce. <laughs> Philios. Maybe uh, maybe Bruce uh, cruising isn't cheap, but has but this his influence can turn less uh, well off families from having a lovely vacation. It's a shame he didn't have a great time. Well. I hear you, Philios, and um, uh, not everyone can afford Norwegian. Um, uh, but you know what? Um, I, if you're a, if you're a, um, if you're a family, if you're a cruiser, you're thinking of going on a cruise. I'm glad you can see a video like Jim Zim's. I'm glad you can see a video from someone else who had a great time on the cruise because it gives you the opportunity as an individual to kind of get the whole picture of you know what people did and what they liked and what they didn't like, and. Um, uh, that, that's what I love to do. If I'm going on a, if I know I'm going on a specific cruise ship coming up, I'm going to be on YouTube looking at videos from people who loved it, hated it, you know, whatever. I'll even look at the promotional videos that the cruise line puts out, which you know will show it in its glory, right? Um, but I really love it when people can't use their cell phones. They just walk around a cruise ship and it's all jiggly, you know, jiggly. But they're telling you what they feel and what they think and what they see and what they're experiencing because it's real. And you're walking behind someone else who's walking behind someone. You're in line. You know, I don't mind it. I, I get the real sense of the ship and the feel uh, because that's what I'm going to experience when I get there. That's that's the way it's going to be for me. When I get on a cruise ship, they're not going to put everybody off to the side. And I'll have it all to myself. I'll be with other people uh, because, you know, I'm just like anybody else experiencing a ship in real life. And that's what I want to see on YouTube. Now, Jim Zim does excellent photography, beautiful video editing. I mean, he does a great job. And I would love to have him on my show here um, to talk to him about his, you know, how he does his work um, because uh, it, it is really well presented. I, I love it. Um, uh, and like I said, uh, he's a, entitled to his opinion. He paid his money, like Lolito Loca says, I paid my money. Uh, and so he has the right to voice his opinion and post it. And he's got. Uh, 200 and what 5,000 plus subscribers all over the years following him uh, fair enough I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll go with that but I won't I won't say that oh that's exactly the way it is today I will say that that's exactly the way it was when Jim Zim was there and your opinion matters to me just as much about what was it like just now uh, tell me let us know I'm so glad you're 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 here to give us the update because we we want to know the latest and we've got fans of ours show people are watching who will be on the seaside next week next month and they'll be updating us again so yes i'm, gl I'm glad it's getting better it sounds like it's definitely getting better um uh, cool jazz i have 15 of those cards in order in my cruises starting in carnival in 1994 tom henry tracy that info is is a uh, tablet now uh tracy uh, we have to make sure we get ahead of them uh uh typher we have uh, we have our cards from our second QE voyage in October 2004, QE2 voyage. That's a that's a souvenir. I'll tell you, uh, TV Fire history now for sure. Tom Henry, well, CJ, I wish I could have saved them all. Only have three of five. Uh, Tommy Eaton, trivia today. I got one coming uh, shortly. I'm just going to get through your comments. Phyllis, my girlfriend looks all over TripAdvisor for everything. Personally, I just like to go with it. <laughs> I hear it, it, it whichever word. Kathy, it's encouraging when you see a cruise line fixing things customers aren't happy about. If MSC fixed all the complaints, that's awesome. They should invite Jim back for, or better, uh, invite Bruce to review it. Yeah, why don't you invite me to come on down? 
I'll take a free cruise from you and I'll bring my camera and I'll follow, I'll go wherever Jim Zim went and let's see uh, what's the difference today versus when it was then. Be more than happy to do a show live from the ship. Absolutely. A couple of shows. That would be great. MG Toe, that cigar smoking dirty old man, John Keld, likes to play the love and marriage game and take advantage of the women contestants. <laughs> uh, uh, MG, uh, you're a bit crusty, uh, but it's cool. Uh, sea Keeper, no worries, friends. I swung that big, fat, whack a troll hammer of mine as soon as they showed up. Well done, uh, MG Toe. No, I'm not. Cool chat. Jim Zim is a very thorough guy. Just watched his website for the first time today. Very detailed. Oh, yes. Uh, sea Keeper. I thought that before, but he, she was not bothersome. Uh, so I swung that, the the big fat whack-a-mole hammer above his head. Tracy Dunlop. Cool, Peter. We'll check those pics out. <laughs> this is great. All right. Good job, Sea Keeper. Thomas saying, Kathy, give, uh, give MG Toe the side eye. Uh, Chito, why are you so negative all the time? Uh, it's, hey, everyone has their opinion, and it's okay by me uh, as long as we keep it cool. We're happy. All right. Uh, I want to get to a couple of topics here, and then I want to get to the tri trivia question. Uh, but uh, let's see what we got. First thing I was going to mention today, uh, I noticed a, a news announcement came out, and I think this came up maybe yesterday. It, it's the fact that, um, that uh, up in Alaska, in Glacier Bay, um, a cruise ships have to have a permit to enter Glacier Bay, to, to see the glaciers calving, as it were, all those videos we see, uh, cruise ship permit fees are going up. And they are based on a per-person basis. So how many people are on the ship is what they are charging. And it's going from $5 per passenger now to $8.28 per passenger, which if you do the math, that's a three twenty-eight dollars increase. That's 64% increase in price. But if I read the article correctly, and I'm still not 100% sure on it, but I, I think I got it right. This is a 10-year uh, time frame that, uh, that this price is in effect for. I don't know if the price rises up to 828 over 10 years or whether it'll be at 828 for the next 10 years. Um, but I, I get the impression that that seems to be the deal. Um, 330,000 passengers last year we're on cruise ships in Glacier Bay uh, at $5 a shot. So that's 1.65 million to the Alaska government. I'm assuming uh, uh, partially U.S. government. I'm not sure who collects the money, who gets the money, how exactly it's used. Um, it's not my business, but I saw that this morning. And that's a $3.28 a passenger increase in port charges. Or taxes and fees, those that little add-on that we keep seeing about. We see the cruise fare, $4.99, $5.99, $6.99, whatever the fare is, plus taxes and fees. This is a tax and a fee uh, that'll be built into cruising starting next year. So it's only going to go higher. Um, other news, uh, Royal Caribbean announced uh, that they will be eliminating all plastic straws at sea officially by the end of this year, by the end of 18, there will be no plastic straws used on any Royal Caribbean vessel if they have their way with it. And all plastics to be eliminated, and I'm thinking about containers, throwaway plastics, this kind of thing, by the end of 2020. They're aggressively working with their suppliers where they bring in all the needs that they have for their next cruise when they get to home port. They offload the old and bring on the new. They want everything coming on the cruise ship to be plastic free, if at all possible, to uh, adhere to these international environmental rules. Some of the videos we see nowadays on TV and or on YouTube where you're seeing scuba divers uh, diving in various areas of the world showing us the pollution in the oceans, the floating plastic that is everywhere and um, is a nuisance and a menace. Um, Western countries are trying to tackle it. Uh, shipping companies are absolutely trying to tackle it because they're under conventions that are worldwide. And if your country's, if your ship, your cruise ship is flagged in a country that buys into that treaty, you're under the obligation to clean up your act. And uh, it's just darn good PR 
for Royal Caribbean, for Norwegian, for Carnival, all the cruise lines, Viking, MSC, everybody to adhere to these policies because it just makes damn good press. You don't want to be the one cruise line that is still being accused of polluting the oceans. Uh, not not good PR. Um, not, not, not a good thing to have happen. Anyway, that came out today. Uh, the other story um, that I saw today, a couple more. I saw a story on Viking today. Uh, Viking has now officially taken delivery of its latest ship called the Orion. That is its fifth 930-passenger uh, ocean liner. The number six ship, number six ship, Jupiter, has been floated out and is now being finished in, in, under construction as well. Uh, Viking is bringing out ship after ship after ship. The popularity of Viking ocean cruises um, has been phenomenal. Um, the Viking river cruises have done extremely well the fans there are fans out there of viking river cruises who have for years and years and years gone to, on viking river cruises every year uh these folks are being targeted along with us for ocean cruises all-inclusive cruising uh all-inclusive uh, packages available specialty dining and drink packages with only 930 passengers maximum no children no one under 18 allowed on board. Uh, this has proved very popular in Europe and in North America. And Viking is bringing out, uh, it looks like almost a ship every nine months or so is being delivered to Viking. I think four are on order. I think seven more are behind it. It's um, stunning. Uh, very successful uh, program that they've put together. Another piece of news that I got today, Bermuda. Uh, the Supreme Court of Bermuda has reversed a law that was proposed by government that banned gay marriage. Uh, that has been thrown out. Uh, gay marriage is legal again. However, the government of Bermuda, if they wish to challenge the Supreme Court ruling on appeal, have six weeks to do so. Um, p and Cruises Cunard, which are both owned by Carnival, have announced that they will be offering gay marriages at sea again, which they had had before, uh, as soon as possible. As soon as they're given the green light, they will offer gay marriage at sea. It is incredibly popular. There was incredible outrage globally about this uh, government decision to reverse uh, uh, gay rights, gay marriage, and so on. But the Supreme Court has come in and ruled it uh, illegal uh, under the Constitution. Uh, we'll find out in six weeks if, it's, if it takes hold. And we'll see where it goes. So uh, to me, I think that's good news. Uh, one more piece of news, and then I got a trivia question for you. The other piece of news was, it's not really news, it's a topic. Uh, this came out a few days ago. I read the story. I thought about it. I read again another little piece about it. I thought I'd mention it today. Um, there was a story out about a, a, a gentleman who passed away on a cruise ship. Uh, he was on uh, what was a bucket list for him. Uh, he had always wanted to be on a cruise before he passed away. He was terminally ill. Uh, the end was near. Um, 30 years of age, not even a 100-pound uh, weight uh, on this gentleman. The gentleman barely weighed 100 pounds. Uh, he was on a three-day cruise with P&O Cruises, and he passed away on his last day, the last evening, uh, I guess the day of, of debarkation. Uh, he was uh, he was found in his room and he had passed away during the night. And the uh, the uh, cruise line um, they had spent uh, had brought in medical staff to try to revive him. They tried to tend to him. There were some medical bills that were that had been piled up while on the shore on the ship. And the the funds necessary to get him on board had been raised through I believe crowdfunding through through donations. And uh, a lot of people, I guess, had chipped in to get him on board this ship. And unfortunately, um, he passed away. The family, uh, very upset, of course, uh, from a couple of angles. Of course, it's very traumatic to lose a family member. But then they got angry at the cruise line. And I thought to myself, is the cruise line really responsible for the passing of the individual? And... Um, there was a charge made or an allegation made by a family member that while the heating and air conditioning wasn't working properly in this room and he was too cold uh, and he really uh, should have been warmer in there. Um, but then I read in the article that he was alone in the room. There was no one tending to him 
24-7 in the room, that in the evening, he was left to, to himself. And uh, I thought that to myself, I thought, found that odd. Uh, why would that be? But, uh, but uh, you know, whatever the uh, situation is. The cruise line, for its part, um, uh, expressed uh, remorse and, and condolences to the family. We're very sorry that this happened. Uh, they have, as a gesture of uh, goodwill, I guess, uh, have said to the family that all uh, expenses incurred by the passenger from the medical team, which were apparently sub substantial, have been waived. Uh, and they are also refunding the family for the passenger's affair. Um, um, but they're not claiming responsibility for him passing away. This passenger came on board the ship terminally ill, very ill, uh, weak, um, and uh, and uh, they they were uh, attempting to accommodate this passenger and the family for this bucket list cruise. Um, and in the end, it, it was unfortunate that he didn't survive the entire uh, length of the cruise. And so my question was, uh, is the cruise line really responsible for his death? Uh, should uh, should the should the passenger have even been allowed to book passage on the ship, knowing? the medical situation of the passenger the, the the you know the dire situation that he was in um should the family have signed a waiver with the cruise line or did this the family even sign a waiver not uh, holding the the not holding the cruise line liable if the passenger were to pass away on the ship um and um should there have been a family member in the room at all times uh, or should there have been a medical a person brought along with the passenger, perhaps a nurse to be brought along with the passenger and the family and to have been accommodating the passenger in the room in the evening as well. I, again, these are questions. I don't have all the facts. I don't know all the facts. Um, I am I'm trying to read between the lines about, uh, you know, maybe when they were raising the money to get this together, it was a compassionate thing to grant this last wish, a dying wish to a dying man a cruise holiday that uh, he had always wanted to have. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the end came when the end came. Um, uh, we'll never know if the wishes of the individual were that if I pass away, be, you know, on the ship, so be it. Uh, I'm here. I made it. I know I'm terminally ill. I know I'm near the end. I'm grateful to be here. We'll never know that. Was there ever anything in writing about that? Again, the, the final wishes of the, the patient, I don't know. Um, but uh, I, I don't really think, on the surface, I can't fault p and I, I have to actually uh, give kudos to p and to even allow him on the ship in the first place. However, maybe p and may have had to, should have perhaps been more insistent with who he's with and how he is being housed on the ship. Perhaps that might have been uh, something the cruise line may have wanted to take on. I don't know. Um, did the family try to get him on other uh, on other ships, other cruise lines, and were rejected, and only P and O would take him? I don't know that either. There's a lot of information that uh, I can't uh, I can't address at this point. Anyway, I just wanted to mention these these articles, these pieces of news. Um, uh, let's see here. Pamela Jordan is saying, when you are watching the YouTube videos, it is important to pay attention to the dates that they were posted so you can be better informed and be up to date. Exactly right. If uh, if someone is doing a cruise ship video from four years ago and telling you how great it is, and then you're seeing a cruise ship video telling you how bad it is, and you're looking at that video and you'll find that, oh, that was the week before a repositioning, a refurbishment, like the Norwegian Sun cruised from hell to the Panama Canal. Uh, and then you see another video from the same ship. It's wonderful again. It was just made two weeks ago. You can now put the timeline together. You figure, oh, I see what's going on here. Based on the ship's history, looking at vacations to go.com, I can tell you that the ship was built in 2001. When the video was made in 2014, it was uh, uh, you know a year after the last refurbish refurbishment, 2013. When the bad video was made, it was made just before the ship was refurbished. It was in rough shape. And then when the good video came out just a month or two ago, it just came out of refurbishment and it's wonderful. So you got to keep an eye on the dates of the YouTube videos. The dates are right down here, right in the description of the video once they're posted. 
By the way, if anyone's watching here for the first time and you're not a subscriber or you've never been a subscriber of my channel, I'd love to have you become one. There's a subscribe button here. There's a subscribe button here. If you click this subscribe button, a little bell will come up, a notification icon. Click that as well. You'll be notified every time I do a video, every time I'm announcing that I'm going live, you'll be notified that I'm going live. And you won't forget to watch Traveling with Bruce. Please subscribe. I'd love to have you come on board. Uh, back to the show here. And then trivia. I've got a trivia question. Uh, Kathy Butler, Sea Keeper, makes me laugh. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, everyone's agreeing with, uh, with uh, Pamela Jordan on that video uh, dating idea. Definitely, Pam, it's an idea. It's a darn good idea to hear positive reviews, but you have to know when these videos were posted. Uh, new environmental rates equals rate increases. New environmental rules equals rate increases, Kathy Butler says. Agree. Cool jazz. No more straws on Royal Caribbean. MG Toe, it's cheaper to wash dishes than dispose of the plastic. There you go, MG. You got it. Phileos, look after our planet. It's the only one we got. I agree. Steve Bartley, Glacier Bay is a national park. So the money goes to the federal government. There was a similar $5 fee collected when I went to the Everglades on a tour out of Miami. Thank you, Steve. Very good. It's going to the National Park Service. Seakeeper, save the planet. It's the only one the universe has uh, uh, <laughs> in this universe that has chocolate. It's the only planet with chocolate. That's right. We got to save this place. Well done, Seakeeper. MG Toe, Viking just announced they're going to the Caribbean. Uh, they've done it before and they're going back again. Cool Jazz, the $75 visa fee to visit Cuba. Who gets that money? I think that's the government of Cuba. I believe that's what it is. It's like an admission fee in hard currency, big time U.S. dollars. Boy, do they need them. Uh, Kathy Butler, I forgot about the Bermuda ban. Thanks for that update, Bruce. MG Toe, ships are bound by the laws of the country where they're registered. Correct. Thomas Henry, good story, Bruce. Kathy Butler, I'm sorry for the family, but I think that's how he wanted to pass. Sounds like he had a peaceful passing that he wanted. I agree, Kathy Tommy, Thomas, uh, Tom Henry saying, uh, Kathy Butler, if the family... Keep, uh, if the family keep going, they will ban uh, terminal cruisers just like late pregnancy cruisers passengers. Billy O's, a cool jazz. Surely they they split it equally and give it to everyone there. Isn't that how communism works? <laughs> the so-called visa. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it goes into the big pot and then uh, expenses. But, of course, the, the country has free health care, free education. Uh, so the folks are uh, – they don't make a lot, but they don't have to spend a lot to be uh, educated. But um, the visa fee goes to the country, the host country. Uh, Paul Wilgus, I think he fulfilled his final dream and just gave up, perhaps. MG Toe, and the room was clean for the next passenger, and life goes on. Um, that's true. Uh, Hyper, seems like the family wanted to milk the cruise line, uh, get a free cruise, perhaps. Not the first time. But could be. A sad event, though, he's saying. So young to die. Uh, yeah, 30 and not even 100 pounds. He was ill. Cool jazz. Family members should have been there. Did the family even uh, even notify the cruise company what was going on? Yes, they did. Apparently, they complained about the room temperature. They were offered another room. I don't know if they took it. There's a, there's a lot behind this story. It's not as cut and dried as we'd like to make it, or as I'm indicating, there's a lot to this. Um, just I'm really giving you the headlines, and uh, uh, there's a lot to it. I really am not interested in digging into this story much further because uh, it's a sad story. No matter what, it does not have a happy ending. Uh, however, uh, perhaps someone is uh, way up there and looking down and going, I was on a cruise. I got to go on a cruise and I'm a happy guy. Tommy Eaton, I think the cruise line did everything they were legally bound by. This person had a dying declaration of taking the cruise before he passed. Billios, if he stayed in a hotel, it wouldn't be the hotel's fault if he died just because the hotel happens to be moving Shouldn't be any different. Think of uh, uh, Bourdain. Uh, he was in a hotel, and he committed suicide in a hotel in France. It's not the hotel's fault. Uh, the family isn't going to be suing the hotel in France. Um, Charles Jordan, Tommy Eaton, I agree with you. MG Toe, if you got the money, p and will take them. <laughs> there you go. Kathy Butler, uh, waivers should be done. Many terminal patients have a DNR on file, so they don't want life-saving measures. If the family was on the ship, perhaps they are just upset that they were off having fun. I, I don't know. Apparently, this happened in the evening. Uh, Kathy Butler, if I was terminal, I'd rather be off doing something wonderful like a cruise instead of sitting at home in a hospital. Good for him. MG2, old people are always dying on board ships. You just don't hear about them. That's true. It, it does happen from time to time. Paul Wilgus, I agree, Kathy. Kathy Butler, the, that elderly lady that lives on the Crystal Symphony full time will likely pass on the ship. I'm sure they've discussed that situation. Tom Henry, unless... Unless you see the uh, Coast Guard helicopter like we saw, uh, I was just uh, was just sad that it was the first sea day out of New York on a 15-day 
uh, uh, PC Cruise, um, uh, Princess Cruise, least our guy got his wish. There you go. Uh, that, uh, you know, it, you just don't know when, when things happen like that. It's just, it's just, this is part of life. It really is. Uh, and, uh, he got it. He got on the cruise. He passed away on the last day of the cruise. Um, I will say the glass is half. I'll take the glass half full rather than half empty and go there. And speaking of a glass, uh, a cheers to everyone traveling with Bruce Muggs. Uh, here's mine. I got a couple more here, and there are a bunch more, as you know, on my page. Grab yourself a mug and support the channel. Caffeine free diet cook. Cheers, all. Oh, lovely vintage of caffeine free diet coke. I love it. If only Coca Cola would sponsor me, I would put a Coca Cola logo on there along with my TWB logo. Oh, yeah. That would be fun. Um, let's see here. Uh, Nina Frank, Michelle. Uh, a suicide in a hotel in Sydney, not the hotel's fault. There you go. Um, or Michael Hutchinson. Hutchinson. She's saying, Seakeeper, delightful traveling with Bruce Anchor. I, you know, Seakeeper, I love these logos. I don't know about you, but man, these logos are phenomenal. Um, every time I go to my channel, I see all these 15 different logos we have now. I love these things. I think they're just piece de resistance. Uh, I don't know if any other YouTubers have uh, logos this good. I don't know. I love it. All right, I've got a trivia question for you guys. Are you ready for trivia? Here we go. Um, this is a city. This one has got cities. Uh, where is Debbie Emanuel when you need her? Uh, I really need Debbie here, and she's not here today, I don't think. I haven't seen her saying hi to us. She always says hi to us. Where is Debbie Emanuel? Uh, because in her honor, I've got the, uh, the trivia question of trivia questions, and Debbie would just have a field day with this one. And she's not here. Jim Thomas, you got to get a hold of her for me. <clears throat> uh, Jim, you know where she is. Uh, track her down and tell her to get on this show immediately uh, because I've got this, this trivia question that's just waiting for Debbie Emanuel to enjoy. I mean, I do everything I can, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Seakeeper, uh, the global. Tom Henry, do you have your clock there to show us? Uh, no, I don't have a clock here to show you. It's on my page, though. You'll see all the clocks on my page. Kathy Butler, I saw in a documentary that most cruise ships have a morgue aboard for deaths. It's true. They do. They actually do. They about two to four bodies that they can accommodate uh, in the morgue. Absolutely. Uh, and then they've got the freezers. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to go there, but I'm telling you, they got the refrigerators downstairs. Uh, lots of refrigerator space. I'm telling you. So there you go. Thomas Henry, uh, say in Tokyo. Nina Frank, singer of In, in Excess. See? Sea Keeper for Debbie. Tokyo. Kathy Butler. Yep. Tokyo. Jim Thomas Cruz. Cuz. Uh, Jim Thomas Cuz is visiting. Uh, Tommy Eaton. It's it's in Japan laughing out loud. Uh, MG Toe. New ships have morgues on the ship. Uh, they would uh, just push you overboard in the olden days. Yeah, I got to go. You're out of here. Off you go. Oh my goodness! Uh, so Jim Thomas saying her, his cousin Debbie Manuel is uh, is visiting right now. Uh, pardon me one moment, folks. My phone just went to a dead power mode, and I've got to plug it in so you can hear my voice for a moment while I uh, plug in the telephone so I can keep talking to you and uh, keep this uh, cruise, uh, keep this chat going on my end. Pardon me. Plug it in. I'm leaning down here. And I'm plugging in my phone. There we go. And I'm at what two percent power right now. So what can I say? Here I am. I'm coming back <laughs> live. We're live. I'm not kidding. This isn't pre-recorded. I'm live, and this is real life. <laughs> Fun time. Get the cord a little closer. It's as close as I can get. So I'm going to be looking down here on my phone now because it's plugged in for my messages with you guys. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, let's go here. Uh, it, 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 Tom Eaton. It's in Japan. Laugh out loud. MG Toe. New ships. Uh, uh, new ships have. Let's see here. Uh, uh, new ships have morgues on the ship. They would just you over there. Okay. They uh, cool jazz. They got cells also. That's right. They got a brig. That's right. Uh, Tommy Henry. Tom Henry. I've been waiting for Debbie to join the Facebook group so I can call her. Where oh where are you, Debbie Emmanuel? Seakeeper on a certain cruise line that shall remain nameless. Um, if you can't identify the meat and someone died on board, <laughs> go vegetarian. <laughs> oh, 
that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible, Sea Keeper. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Kathy Butler just turned green. I got a green face here on this one. <laughs> Tom Henry loved it though. MG Toe, which cruise line is that? Sea Keeper. MG wants to know. <laughs> Cool jazz. Zeke always tastes like chicken, he said. <laughs> Billy goes, everything tastes like chicken. Oh, man, except chicken. Where? <laughs> except chicken. <laughs> where my Mrs. Cooks. Seakeeper, only chicken tastes like chicken. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, if you're, if you're ever on a cruise and you uh, – you end up at a port where you can go on a lot of horse rides, you know, you can go on a tour on horseback. And then the next day on the cruise, you've got all these steaks available. Watch out. Maybe some of those horses didn't make it. To, oh, that's terrible. That's just terrible. Tommy Eaton, I'm getting chicken. I'm getting little drumsticks up here on the chat. I'm sure you guys have seen this. Oh, my goodness. Seakeeper, I had a guana in Honduras. Delicious. <laughs> Oh, uh, it doesn't taste like chicken though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do trivia here. In honor of uh, Debbie Manuel, uh, the uh, the uh, quiz is the world's most populated capital cities. Capital cities around the world, the most populated capital cities. And in honor of Debbie Manuel, the number one answer is Tokyo. And uh, we're going to strike that one right off the list here. 38.6 million people live in Tokyo, the capital of Japan. And that one is for Debbie Emanuel. You know, she's just been so nice to this guy and this channel. I love her. Um, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Paul Wilkes is starting off with Moscow. And uh, by the way, I'm looking for the top 26 cities. Uh, Moscow came in here. Um, looking at the list at number 17, Moscow, 11 and a half million people, 17th on the list. Uh, Philios, uh, looking for London in the United Kingdom, and London came in uh, in 11th place at 13.8 million. Uh, 11th place for London, England. Uh, what else we have here? Seakeeper uh, is guessing Mexico City, sixth on the list at 21.2 million. Uh, can you imagine living in a city of 21 million and you're only the sixth largest capital city? Uh, and yet there are other cities that aren't capitals that are even bigger than you. Unbelievable. What is happening on this planet? Tommy Eaton is thinking about New York City. New York City, great town. Love the Big Apple, but it's not the capital of the United States of America. I'm looking for the capital city of countries. And uh, we'll go from there. So I can't use that one. Tom Henry came in here with uh, London. We already have it. Seakeeper is coming in with Beijing in China. Beijing is fourth on the list at 24.9 million. Um, let's, say, let's see where we are going from here. Uh, Peter Heckema, New York City. We already went over that one. Philios, uh, Paris, France. What about Paris, France? Yes, Paris is, I believe, on the list. Paris is 15th on the list at 12.1 million. Uh, Kathy uh, Butler is looking at Seoul, South Korea. Seoul is third at 25.6 million. So we have number one, Tokyo, number three, Seoul, number four, Beijing, number six, Mexico City, number 11, London, number 17, Moscow. Uh, we got a bunch to go. Uh, Thomas Henry's thinking Paris, Peter Heckham of Mexico, we have him. Jim Thomas, I, I tried like hell to go. To get a hold of her, <laughs> I tried like hell to get a hold of her. Uh, MG Toe, what about Bakersfield? How about Bakersfield? That, uh, yeah, that you know, normally I would go with that. Uh, cool jazz. How about Los Angeles? Isn't that the capital of the United States of America? Los Angeles. Uh, Tracy Dunlop, Albany. That's a capital city, Bruce. Albany, New York, is a capital city, um, and it's you know, it's part of the world. Uh, I grant you, it's but. It's not a world capital city for a country. Sorry, Albany. Uh, Nina Frank, Beijing. We've got Philios, Johannesburg. Nope. Uh, Pretoria unto itself didn't make the list. It's not big enough. Um, MG to uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is um, not on the list uh, for size. Uh, I believe Rio de Janeiro is in Brazil, and that's not the capital of Brazil. 
Uh, cool Jazz. Which Albany? Uh, Tracy Dunlop. Peter Heckema, Rio. Uh, nope. Nina Frank, Washington, USA. Washington, D.C. Washington is the smallest capital city in this survey. 26th on the list at 5.9 million people. Washington is just a small capital town compared to these other folks over here. Peter Heckema, what about Delhi? Delhi in uh, India. Um, it's actually not called Delhi. It's called New Delhi. And it is the fifth largest capital on the planet at 21.7 million, New Delhi. Uh, not Dilly, by the way. Not Dilly Dilly. Uh, Delhi. All right. Uh, Nina Frank, Berlin, Germany. Does Berlin, Germany cut it and make the top 25? The answer is no. It does not cut it. Berlin, Germany, I think is around the three and a half million mark. Nowhere near the top 26. Big town, but not big enough for this list. Jim Thomas, guest Deb is uh, shopping with her cuz, sorry. Well, she can watch on the replay. We honor her today. Affilios, uh, Brasilia. What about Brasilia, Bruce? Uh, since Brasilia is the capital of Brazil, does it make the list? Nope, it does not make the list. It is smaller than Washington, D.C. It's around 5 million, uh, not at 5.9 million. Buenos Aires, Filios is thinking about Buenos Aires, uh, which is the capital of Argentina, and it is on the list. It is the 14th largest city, capital city in the world, 12.7 million. Big time. Bombay is not on the list. Uh, Bombay is now known as Mumbai. Mumbai is not the capital of India. Uh, let's see. Filios, Buenos, we got it. Cool jazz. Sydney, not the Australia. It's not the capital of Australia. Sydney is not the capital. Ottawa, Ontario. Oh, about 800,000 people, maybe 900,000. Uh, metropolitan, if it's a million, that would be it. Not even close. Uh, sorry, Sea Keeper. Peter Hekema. Cairo, Egypt. Uh, yes, Cairo is the seventh largest capital city in the world. 20.4 million living in Cairo. Uh, Tom Henry, Singapore. What about Singapore? It's its own country. It's its own city. It's about five and a half million, smaller than Washington. Didn't make the, the list. Philios, Mumbai, nope, didn't make it. Uh, Jim Thomas, New Delhi, we got it. Peter Heckema, Bangkok, Thailand. Bangkok is uh, number nine on the list, 14.5 million. Yes, it made the list. Nina Frank, Mumbai, not the capital of India. Uh, MG Toe, uh, Phil, it's still uh, uh, Bombay to me. <laughs> still, I'm calling it Bombay. John B. Ottawa, Seakeeper, Jakarta. Jakarta is number two. Jakarta is Indonesia, 30.3 million people in the city of Jakarta. Here are the results so far. Uh, Debbie Emanuel got Tokyo, because she always gets Tokyo, at 38.6 million. Uh, Jakarta at 30 million. Seoul, Korea, South Korea, 25.6. Beijing at 24.9. New Delhi at 21.7. Mexico City, 21.2. You guys also guessed Cairo at 20.4. We, we have a gap. Then we have got Bangkok, another gap. We have London, England, and a couple of gaps. Buenos Aires, Paris. We have Moscow. We have Washington. I'm looking for at least 10 more cities to fill out this list. Uh, what's the capital of Taiwan is being asked here. Tommy Eaton, Madrid, Spain. Does Madrid make it? Yeah, 25th overall. Madrid has 6.4 million, just ahead of Washington. Trace Dunlop's, uh, oops, not capitals, not world capitals. Yep, we're looking at world capitals. Peter Hekema, Istanbul, not the capital of Turkey. It is not the capital city of Turkey. Peter Hekema, San, San Paulo, or Sao Paulo, Brazil, where they held the Olympics. Not the capital of Brazil. It's Brasilia, and it's not big enough. Uh, Kathy Butler, Hanoi in Vietnam. Hanoi is 21st on the list, 7 million people. Bigger than Washington. Filios, Madrid, we got it. Nina Frank, Jakarta, we got it. MG Toe, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, capital of the world. Not good enough. Maybe good for Utah, not for a world capital city. Sorry, uh, not no can do. Uh, Washington, D.C. made the list in number 26. Uh, Peter Heckema, Delhi, we've already got. Nina Frank, Berlin, not big enough. Guess that Deb is shopping. Uh, let's see here. I've got to make sure I'm uh, up to speed. I may have read these already. Uh, sorry, folks, uh, catching up now. Sorry. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Hanoi, Madrid, Jakarta, Salt Lake City, Mumbai. No, Ankara. Ankara in Turkey is the capital of Turkey. But Ankara is not big enough to make the top 25. There you go. Uh, Steamy Bean, the question, world capital cities, the largest of the world capital cities. That's the question. Dina Frank, Canberra in Australia, nowhere near 5 million um, to make the list. Nowhere near 5 million. Cool Jazz, Quito, Q-U-I-T-O. Quito uh, did not make the cut. Nope, Quito didn't make it. Kathy Butler, most populated capitals in the world. Jim Thomas, Panama City. Nope. Taipei, Taiwan is the guess for Taiwan. Is Taipei, Taiwan on the list? The answer is no. Officially, no on the list. Steamy Bean, Tokyo, we already got it. Moscow, we have already got it. Mexico City, we got it. Canberra didn't make it. Taipei didn't make it. Manila, we've already had guessed, I believe. Uh, no, Manila has not been guessed. It's on the list. 16th largest, 11.8 million. Manila is in. Constantinople, no, Istanbul didn't make it. Sorry. Philios, did we have Beijing? We did. Beijing is the uh, fourth largest city by in a capital size, capital city. Peter Hekema, Tehran in Iran. Yes, Tehran is eighth on the list at 15.2 million people. Tehran is on the list. Uh, Steve Mavine, go Ottawa Red Blacks. Uh, Tom Henry, Bogota in Colombia. What about Bogota, Colombia? Yes, the 12th largest capital in the world at 13.8 million people. Istanbul, no, Rome. Roma is not on the list in Italy. Didn't make it for 5 million. So we have Lima. Lima, Peru is the next guess. It's 18th on the list at 9.7 million. Very good. Lima, Peru. Here are the guesses so far, the correct guesses. Tokyo, Debbie Manuel in her honor. Jakarta, Seoul, Beijing, New Delhi, Mexico City, Cairo, Tehran, Bangkok. Then I've got a gap of one. Then we have London, Bogota, another gap. Buenos Aires, Paris, Manila, Moscow, Lima. I've got a couple of gaps. Hanoi, a couple more gaps. Madrid and Washington. I am looking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more cities to make the list. I am looking for cities. Uh, let's see here uh, exactly where they are. I'm looking for four cities in Africa out of these cities to give you an idea. Kathy Butler, what about Kuala Lumpur? Kuala Lumpur, is it at all in this list? Yes, it is. The 20 largest capital city in the world is Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, 7.2 million people. Well done. Peking, no go. Tehran, we have. Baghdad, Nina Frank, Baghdad in Iraq. And I believe we have a winner. Uh, yeah, Baghdad is the 19th largest capital city in the world. 7.2 million estimated living in Baghdad. Um, let me see here. Manila, we have Santiago. Pollution there is insane. Filios is thinking Santiago. Santiago did not make the cut on this uh, survey. Didn't make it. Uh, Steamy Bean, uh, uh, how them capitals? How about the Washington capitals? How about that? Nina Frank, Kiev, not, uh, yes, it's capital of Ukraine, but not big enough to make the list. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Cape Town, not the capital. Dhaka, cool jazz is looking at Dhaka. Tenth largest capital city, Bangladesh. Capital Bangladesh, 13.8 million people. We now have the top 12 in consecutive order nailed down. We're looking for country number 13. Havana, Cuba? No, Lagos is another guess. Lagos. Uh, Lagos is not on the list. No. Uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Riyadh did not make the cut either. Um, Medellin, no. Nairobi. Nairobi is on the list. Kenya's capital city of Nairobi, 6.5 million people. We're nailing a couple of these here. Very well done. Uh, Warsaw, no. And Riyadh, no. <clears throat> I'm looking for <clears throat> uh, two countries in Africa for sure three of them as a matter of fact and uh, it is the last three that i need um 
I'm looking for three capital cities for countries in Africa only. Two of the cities are six and a half million people approximately. One is 13.2. Uh, Cairo has been guessed already. And uh, we'll see how we do on these last few, uh, these last few uh, guesses. Tripoli, nope. Tripoli in, uh, in uh, Libya is about, uh, I think it's about 3 million. Uh, not big enough. <clears throat> um, shortly, I will give you the names of the countries, and then you can try to guess the cities in these countries. Uh, Mogadishu, no, nope. not, uh, not that one, uh, Cool Jazz. Um, big city, though, big town. I'm looking for the capital of Sudan. I'm looking for the capital of Angola. I'm looking for the capital of the Republic of Congo. Uh, not necessarily household names around here. And if you're a U.S. diplomat and you're getting placed here, you probably piss somebody off. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be at these places in the U.S. consulate or embassy. Uh, I wouldn't want to be here, but uh, someone's got to do it. Uh, let's see here. Khartoum. Yes, Khartoum in Sudan. Six and a half million souls in Khartoum. That's one gone. Two to go. Rabat in Morocco. Nope. I love Cape Town, Philios is saying. Kinshasa in the Congo. Kinshasa, yes. 13th largest city in the world for capital city, 13.2 million. We've got one left, the capital of Angola. And I'm sure one of you will pop it up here in a moment. And we will have this quiz done. And it's our only trivia quiz of the day. Uh, we're doing pretty good on timing here today. Very well done. Luanda, there it is. Luanda in Angola, six and a half million people. The list, the La Granda. <laughs> La Granda, that's a good one, uh, Richard C. Uh, the, you know, it's a big place, La Granda. Here's the final list. Tokyo for Debbie Emanuel was the number one size capital city in the world. 38.6 million in Tokyo. Jakarta, 30.3 million. Seoul, 25.6 million. Beijing, 24.9. New Delhi in India, 21.7. Mexico City, Mexico, 21.2. Cairo in Egypt, 20.4 million. Tehran, 15.2. Bangkok in Thailand, 14.5 million. Dhaka in Bangladesh, 14.3 million. London in the United Kingdom, 13.8 million. Bogota, Colombia, 13.8 million. Kinshasa in the Republic of uh, Congo, 13.2. Buenos Aires in Argentina, 12.7. Paris, France, 12.1. Manila, Philippines, 11.8 million. Moscow, 11.5 million. Lima, Peru, 9.7 million. Baghdad, Iraq, 7.2. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, 7.2 million. Hanoi in Vietnam, 7 million people. Nairobi in Kenya, 6.5. Luanda in Angola, 6.5. Khartoum in Sudan, 6.5. Madrid, Spain, 6.4. Washington, D.C., United States of America, 5.9 million. That makes the top 26 list here. And you guys did very well. Uh, very Congratulations to all. Good search, CJ. Uh, Philios, Wakanda from Avengers. Wakanda. Uh, Tom Henry, much too crowded for my taste. Oh, my. Kathy Butler, laugh out loud, Philios. You know, <clears throat> there are certain cities on this list that I would love to visit. Uh, to get Jen to go, awfully tough. Uh, for me, Tokyo would be definitely on the list. I would love to see Tokyo. Seoul, perhaps. Beijing, eh, maybe. Mexico City, eh. Cairo, eh. Uh, at my advanced age, eh. London, I've been to, love it. Uh, Buenos Aires, eh, whatever. Paris, I've seen. Manila, eh. Moscow, eh. Um, Baghdad, eh, eh. Uh, Hanoi, eh. Um, Madrid, Spain, love to go to Madrid, Spain. Washington, D.C., seen a few times. So that, that's my personal taste on these uh, capitals, uh, it, the size that they are, you know, that they are. Quite amazing. I'd love to go to China for, say, Hong Kong. I'd love to see Hong Kong. Uh, but Be Beijing, Shanghai, maybe Shanghai. Um, Taiwan, eh, maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, Australia, definitely Australia. Uh, Sydney, Seoul, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, excuse me, uh, Perth, Brisbane, love to see. New Zealand, love to visit New Zealand. That would be really cool. Anyway, there you go. A uh, couple of my personal thoughts. Um, and uh, Charles Jordan, uh, Iva, South Carolina, 1,286 people. <laughs> uh, Charles Jordan's liking that. Uh, Kathy Butler would love to cruise to Tokyo, stay a few days and go to Tokyo Disneyland. Filios uh, Buenos Aires is a cool, it's cool to visit, Bruce. That would be kind of neat. 
Tom Henry, I would love to uh, visit Madagascar to see King Julian, uh, 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 a lemur. <laughs> there you go, go see a lemur. Right on. Uh, there's, a, there's always something interesting to see. Filios, New Zealand is beautiful, only 4 million there. Richard C., nice cruise from LA doing the Pacific Rim 75 days for sure. I would love to see Fiji. Uh, I'd love to see some of the uh, New Caledonia, some of the uh, Pacific Islands. Uh, I'd like to go to Hawaii. I haven't been to Hawaii myself yet. I'd like to go to Hawaii. Uh, I know it's on the same latitude as Cayman Islands, where I used to live. So I'd be very, be very familiar weather for me. Um, let's see here. Tom Henry, Kathy, book the Jewel Trans-Pacific MG Tow in Asia. There are crowds everywhere like the new ships. Yeah, well, that's uh, the par for the course. Tokyo has been crowded forever. <laughs> forever. Tokyo has been crowded. Uh, quite, uh, quite, the, uh, quite the country, quite the culture. Uh, technology, unbelievable. I would love to visit Japan. And not just Tokyo. I would love to see a lot of Japan. Uh, I marvel at their uh, their organized uh, society, their, their, their technology. Uh, the people uh, would love to be there. Love to see it. Uh, there you go. Uh, Kathy Butler, thumbs up. Philios, Bangkok is an eye opener. I guess it would be, wouldn't it? Indeed. How many thumbs ups are we doing? How are we doing against those thumbs downs? Uh, they're sitting at 14. Looks like the trolls ran out of gas. 31 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, for the thumbs ups today. I really appreciate that. That's wonderful. Uh, anyway, I'm going to close this show out. We've been on for an hour and 29 minutes. Uh, I hope you've had a good time today. The internet held up, so I'm really glad about that. And I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, Pamela Jordan, goodbye. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for visiting my store. Thanks again for uh, uh, contributions to my uh, to my PayPal. I appreciate that. Thank you for my uh, going to my Amazon store link and going into Amazon. Thank you for all of you guys doing that. As an Amazon affiliate, I appreciate you all very much for helping me out. I love it. I need a new camera. Enjoy your day, Bruce, uh, tomorrow, your day off, uh, Kathy San. And uh, enjoy your weekend, everybody. I'll see all of you on Monday. I will be on this show, 5 o'clock, Monday night, 5 o'clock Eastern. And I will be on La Lido Loca on Cruise Wars Monday. They're posting that video. I can't wait to see it myself. I'm quite excited. Um, let's see here. Uh, cool jazz. Uh, Liberty must be closed today. Less traffic. Great picture. See you all. Uh, take it easy. Bruce Filios is saying uh, Japan is glowing now. Would, I would not go to Japan if I were an Olympian. <laughs> MG Toa is saying. Uh, Nina Frank, have a nice one. Guys, take care. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thank you for joining me on June the 9th, 2018 for my Saturday afternoon show. I'll see you Monday at 5 Eastern time unless something big happens in the meantime. Have a great day and a great weekend. We'll see you then, guys. Take care and goodbye for now.